Heute will ich erzählen, wie ich durch meine Forschung festgestellt habe, wie ich mit Hilfe tödlicher Spinnen Schmerzmittel herstellen kann. Aber, wie Sie hören können, ist mein Deutsch nicht so gut. Und ich bin mir sicher, dass Ihr Englisch besser ist als mein Deutsch. So, if you don't mind, I'll give this to you. Sorry. <laughs> what I hope you understood that I just said is that today I'm going to tell you about how, we can, how spiders can make painkillers, or a bit more precisely, how we can make painkillers out of the venoms that the spiders contain. And that was the work that I did at University of Queensland in Australia before I came here to Hamburg. And Australia is a great place to do this kind of research because there's lots of these ladies around in the nature. When I say little ladies, it is the size of uh, like that, so we can decide if it's little or not. Um, these spiders, they don't kill their prey or their food with webs like the little spiders do. They kill them with their mere size and, and the potent venom that they have. Um, so, to do the research on these kind of spiders, obviously we need to be able to get the venom out of them. So how do we do that? We milk them. So if you look at a spider, on the head and front there's the venom teeth. If you flip it over, if you're brave enough to do that, you can see the venom teeth sticking out in front. What you do to milk them, you grab the spider, you hold on tight, and you put the venom teeth over a small epi. Then you can stimulate the teeth with a small battery, and that stimulation makes the venom flow out of the teeth into the tube. What I also hope you can see on these pictures is that these are not my hands. <laughs> I'm actually afraid of spiders. <laughs> so this part of the research I led over to the boys to do. Another way of getting the venom is actually just to piss off the spiders. I have a small video of how that looks. So it sits here and we're just pissing it off. Again, I hope you can see that these are not my hands. This is David. Uh, once David was not paying well enough attention doing this, Spider grabbed onto the pipette, ran up and bit him in the, in the hand and that sent David to hospital. Good thing is that David is 150 kilo and he was fine and not the size of a, of a little mouse. But you can see that the little drops are just coming up and just picked them up. So an easier way of getting the venom out, but a less controlled way, I would say. So by now you must be thinking I'm crazy. I want to make pain-killing drugs out of a, a venom that sent David to hospital and that can kill mice and that can kill little birds if that's what they're eating. But if we look at the venom drop, well, maybe a slightly overproportioned venom drop here, it's not like water where it's, everything is the same within the drop. It's a lot of different components that is inside that little drop. So I like to compare it to a big pile of jelly beans. <laughs> so there are different sizes, different colors, different flavors. And it's all those different things combined that kills the mice or sent David to hospital. But if we are separating out those individual little jelly beans, then we uh, can get that pain-killing effect on the mice. So how do we celebrate, uh, celebrate, separate <laughs> <laughs> a massive pile of jelly beans? Well, we need a lab and we need a very patient PhD student. Um, obviously, if we want to make this into a medicine, we need to distribute it to a lot of people. We need a lot of venom. We need a lot of patient uh, PhD students. Um, so a big part of my research went into how can we actually produce this in the lab so we no longer need a whole factory of spiders, we don't need a whole factory of David's risking to get in hospital and a whole factory of very patient PhD students. Um, but how do we actually get this pain-killing effect out of uh, the little jelly beans from the spiders? And to explain how that works, we need to take a trip to Pakistan first. So in Pakistan, there was a boy. He was a very, very successful street artist. He was walking on burning coals. He was putting knives through his arms. He was earning a lot of money doing these fearless acts. But the reason he was so fearless in, in the acts he was doing was because this boy, he couldn't feel any pain at all. And that makes him really, really interesting to study if we want to study the mechanism of how pain works and if we want to study how can we make new pain-killing drugs. Unfortunately, uh, before any researchers could study this boy, he died because he jumped off a roof, because no one told him that that was dangerous. <laughs> Luckily for us, uh, other members of his family had the same inability to feel pain. 
And when they studied this family, they found that it was only one part of the nervous system that didn't function normally. And that part was essential for distributing pain throughout our body. So if we look a bit more into how does the pain pathway work and how do we feel pain in, in our body. So this is if we strip me off of my skin, this is what I look like. So we have a lot of muscles and we have a lot of nerves going through from the toes up to the brain from the hands. And that's how we feel everything. We feel pain, but we also feel that it's itchy or it's warm or I'm moving my muscles. But uh, let's say I slap you with a hammer. That will open some uh, doors in our nervous system and those doors will allow the pain signal to go through and into the brain where we can feel the pain. So you can understand if we want to make a pain-killing drug, we could just slam this door closed and we have a new painkiller. And it was exactly this door that the boy in Pakistan didn't have. So you could say that this could be the ideal way to treat pain. The challenge is that in the body we have so many doors. Some of them are the red ones that distribute pain through our body, but some of them are blue and they are the ones that are responsible for the beating of our heart. So it's therefore really important that if we want to make a pain-killing drug, that we only target the red doors and leave the blue doors completely untouched because we don't want to develop a pain drug that then have a side effect of death. <laughs> um, and that's where the spiders and the jelly beans come into play because that's one of the things that they do extremely well. So they do extremely well just closing the red doors but leaving the blue doors completely untouched. So that's very well, but how do we know which color jelly beans, which flavor we need to use? And for that, we need to be able to uh, artificially make the nervous system in the lab. And that was another big part of my research where I can uh, make that. For that, we need another animal. We need these little froggy ladies. But we actually don't need the whole frog, we only need the eggs. Uh, so what we do is that we put them to sleep, cut them open, we steal the eggs, stitch them back up, we put them back in the tank, and then we have our dish of eggs. This was one of the parts that I hated most about my PhD, that these poor ladies had to wake up with my bad stitches in their stomach. So let's just uh, forget about that for now, <laughs> and focus on the egg. What's really cool about these eggs is that they behave exactly like a human cell. So in our, our body we have millions and millions of cells, but they're very, very small, so we need microscopes to study them. But these eggs, like they can lie on the, on the front of your fingers, so they have a lot more manageable size. Obviously they are not human cells, so we'll, we will need to give them the human DNA. We can then grab uh, different kinds of DNA, and we, I grab the one from the nervous system. So after a few days, this egg will now behave like um, the human nervous system, and we can now study those doors in, in uh, isolation. So if we uh, to check the nervous um, signals, we put electrodes into these eggs because actually the nerve signals that we are sending through our body is actually small electrical currents. And that's how we can uh, look at them. And we can now give the jelly beans and we can see is it able to actually get rid of that uh, pain signal that is sending through the red doors. Obviously we can uh, give it all sorts of different kind of DNA for all the different colors of doors we have in the human body. And we can then make sure that we're only targeting the red doors and leaving all the other doors completely untouched. So with this, I hope that I convinced you that spiders are not just evil, angry creatures that can cause pain, but can also be used in drug development and hopefully uh, develop the next generation of pain drugs. Thank you.